Hello, Chess.com viewers. It's good to be back doing another video for you guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed the previous videos that I've done on spicy gambits, the king's gambit, the Dutch defense. There's a fair few out there now. So if this is the first video you're watching, have a look in the library and uh, check out some of the other ones. At the moment, I'm really trying to concentrate on a repertoire uh, for you, starting with the move 1e4. And I'm concentrating on a very super aggressive repertoire for you. So lots of attacking chess, gambits, really the sharpest way you can play with a move at 1e4. And I've already looked at it in previous videos, the King's Gambit. And I've looked at ways to play against the Sicilian. I've looked at ways to play against the French defence and the Karakhan. Now, in a couple more videos to come, I'm going to suggest a way to play against the Perk defence and then against the Scandinavian defence. So hopefully then, when you've looked at all these videos, you will have a perfect attacking, gambiting repertoire for white. So that's the aim. All these videos, you'll be well prepared against any black option and you'll be able to sacrifice a pawn, win the game quickly, loads of gold coins will be thrown on your board, the crowd will be cheering and everyone will be happy. And then you can tell me that my video was brilliant. Well, that's that's the idea anyway. Now, to, in this video, I'm actually going to give you another option that you might be interested in playing after the moves e4, e5. Now, e5 is obviously one of the moves you're going to face the most when you play chess. Now, I have recommended the King's Gambit in a series of videos, and that is a very interesting option. But some of you may find it a little bit complicated. I certainly do at times, and a little bit theoretical to follow. So the aim of this video is to give you another option against 1e5. And the option here is another very gambity line. It's called the Danish Gambit. I'm sure lots of you have heard about the Danish Gambit. And the Danish Gambit was apparently called the Danish Gambit because it was played by Martin Severin and the Paris in a Paris tournament, 1867. And he's normally given credit for this gambit. He's a, he was a Danish player, of course, hence the name. And it's also been very popular with other great attacking players like Alakine, Marshall, Blackburn, and Mazes, the old player from the 1920s, Mazes. Um, and it went a little bit out of popularity, I would say, come the early 1900s, like 1920s, when it was discovered Black had some maybe safer ways to defend against it. And I'm going to be honest, I think that, um, you know, with best play, it's probably equal position. I don't think white is going to, you know, be, this is not going to like shock the chess world, but it's a very tricky opening and it's a very interesting opening. And given the right opponent, given the right day, you can win extremely quickly. It's an opening I've tried out myself on a number of occasions and uh, it's very interesting. So let's move on to the moves now and try to get it across what we're trying to achieve. So the Danish Gambit starts with a move D4 here. Now, we're going to be concentrating on the move E takes D4. This is obviously critical. Other moves we don't need to worry about. And now the move C3 is the Danish Gambit. And one of the main points of this opening is that we allow black to take on C3 and even to take on B2. And our plan as white is to place one bishop on C4 going straight across to the f7 square so that's a lovely bishop and then when our dark square bishop gets to b2 this beast will be striking across to g7 as well so this is one of the main ideas of the danish to get both of our bishops to these aggressive attacking squares so this is one thing you've got to remember to bear in mind so now d5 is an option to avoid the gambit. Now, the main move is D takes C3, and this is what you'll encounter most of the time. Now, just quickly, if your opponent does play D5, we're going to transpose to a line we're going to look at in a minute. Now, I think D5 is really one of the only other ways that black can avoid uh, taking all these pawns on C3 and then on B2. And D5 is a very sensible move to try to open up the center. So after D5, we should go... Pawn takes d5, 
queen takes d5 and now i'm recommending we just take on d4 with our pawn and after something like knight to c6 we should play knight to f3 to defend our d4 pawn and we have an isolated pawn position here which i think is roughly equal but black in my opinion has to be more careful than white in this type of position and our plan as white is very straightforward we're going to go knight to c3 attack the queen we're probably going to place our bishop on f1 on e2 because our opponent may well go bishop g4 and it's especially the right square to place on e2 against that and we're going to simply aim to castle quickly so knight to c3 bishop to e2 castles quickly and then if we get a chance we want to go d4 d5 start a quick attack so these are our main ideas in this declined version of the danish gambit so let's let me just show you some moves just to give you a rough idea of what might happen so let's say bishop to b4 check a very logical move from black we now continue with knight to c3 as planned bishop to g4 i consider this to be the main line now bishop to e2 so we should always make sure we can take on f3 with our bishop let's say black takes on f3 we recapture back and there's a nasty trick here black can't play queen takes d4 because he'd lose his queen to bishop takes c6 check so he cannot play that and the main line is queen to c4 here trying to stop white from castling if the queen for example goes somewhere else let's say all the way back to somewhere like d7 well here we can actually just castle very quickly and remember one of the main ideas i mentioned before it was d4 d5 this is a move we want to play next with some good attacking chances especially the rook coming to e1 quickly with check so that's not too worrying so instead of this move queen to c4 and now i think you should enter into an ending here with queen to b3 and this is probably equal but i think black has to be a little bit more careful than white for example queen takes queen pawn takes queen and this bishop of ours is very strong on f3 and now if knight takes d4 we can actually play bishop takes b7 and now it's you can check this if you want yourself at home but um, i looked at one line with knight c2 check and our opponent can take on a1 i won't go too deeply anymore on this we take on a1 and our two bishops are very good in the ending and this has played a long a long time ago but um this is a well-known line from a long time ago but i don't i don't think you need to get too concerned about this line as long as you remember to play in a very simple fashion after this move let's just go back d5 after the move d5 what do we do so this is our opponent declines the gambit well we should take on d5 take on d4 um and then develop both our knights and go bishop to e2 and get castle quickly i mean there was another game here just show some of the dangers that black has in this position if he's not careful instead of bishop b4 knight to f6 looks very natural then we can either go knight to c3 here if we wish or we can play bishop to e2 um just the same kind of plan and now let's see this line bishop b4 check one more time knight to c3 well if bishop g4 now it's slightly different because we're able to castle a little bit quicker here and we're already threatening the queen on d5 and this shows a typical trick you can do if our opponent moves the queen away remember the move that i said you should play given a chance when you've castled got your knights out and bishop out d5 and this forces the knight away and white won very quickly in the game crits versus the richer from germany year 2000 after knight's e7 and now we get aggressive always play aggressive moves the whole idea of this opening series is aggression can you see an aggressive move here knight to b5 and after queen d7 white played queen to a4 and in this position black actually resigned maybe a little bit premature there but it's a very difficult position because we're threatening the bishop and we're also threatening knight takes c7 check and if something like bishop to d6 we can go knight takes bishop and bishop to b5 winning the queen so that's a very straightforward way of playing right let's go all the way back now and let's have a look at what happens if black accepts the danish gambit so that's with d4 takes c3 
So far, we've mainly just concentrated on d5. It's much more likely your opponent will take on c3. Now, there are a number of ways you can play this position, but we're going to only concentrate on one move. And that move is bishop to c4, the true Danish gambit. And with this line, we're really tempting our opponent into taking on b2. And then we get our compensation I mentioned before of our bishop on b2 and our bishop on s7. It's really like romantic chess, this. You're giving up all your pawns. You're just trying to get your pieces into the game quickly. Nice flowing moves, attacking flowing chess. So it's very fluent chess and it's very romantic way to play. And again, there are a number of options here. There's the move d5. There's the move d6. But I think before we look at this, let's take a look at what happens if black takes on b2. The most obvious move. So black takes on b2. We obviously have to take back our bishop on b2. And with two pawns down, two pawns down, what ideas does white have? Well, your main idea here is queen to b3. The whole Danish gambit is works because of this move queen to b3 where you're trying to get all your pieces lined up against f7 now you should combine this queen to b3 move with simple development knight to f3 and castles sometimes the knight on b1 comes to c3 sometimes to d2 but you're going for quick attacking development this is the key thing there's a number of moves here again and let's first have a look that's one of the most popular moves, bishop to b4 check. How do you meet this? Develop, knight to c3. And the knight can come to d5 very quickly here, so that's one of the benefits of this, obviously when you get your king out of the pin. And now I'm just going to show you a game where we can see white's typical play, his typical attack and chances come, um, come good here. So let's say now queen to e7. Knight to f6 is another move here, but against something like knight to f6, we continue in our normal fashion, queen to b3, attacking the bishop, lining up against f7. And we just want to develop very quickly. So after queen to e7 here, again, I'd recommend putting the knight on e2 this way to defend our other knight. And after something like castles, castles, now white's finished his development. Let's say black tries to develop a piece with knight c6. What is a typical attacking idea here? Now that you've got your queen out, both your knights out, hopefully you can find the typical attacking idea. It's one of the reasons the knight comes to c3. Well, a great move here would be knight to d5. This unleashes the bishop on b2, puts some pressure immediately in the center of the board, and it turns into now a very good attack for white. For example, black really has to take on d5. Otherwise, we're going to take on f6, destroying black's kingside. And after bishop takes d5 is the correct move here, I feel, because we don't want to block our bishop in with a move like pawn takes d5. I want to keep my bishop on this diagonal, this strong diagonal. And on the surface, it may seem that this position is not too dangerous to black. It might, it might look, well, what's white's doing? But this bishop on b2 is such a strong attacking piece. And if black now very casually played a move like d6, well, after something like queen to g3, our attack becomes very strong. Queen takes g7 mate is, is, is really hard move to stop, and we can just see this pressure and how this pressure is working perfectly here. So this is the kind of idea you've got to bear in mind. So let's just go back now and have a look at a game that continued with bishop to b4 check here. And knight to c3 and now there was a game i had in mind which was a very nice finish for white so i'm just going to show it very quickly and in that game black played the immediate queen to e7 now there are a number of options here but generally i think in this system where black checks on b4 generally i think your knight is well placed on e2 because if black ever takes on c3 we can take one knight and then we still have a knight coming to to the d5 square now, knight, takes, knight to f6 is very logical. I would imagine a move like queen takes e4 is suicidal. We can just go queen to b3, and now our attack must be too strong for black to deal with. We have too many pieces developed. 
castling soon, a rook on the e-file, straight towards black's king. So I don't think black can grab another pawn. It makes more sense for black to try knight to f6. Now again, we play simple moves, get our king castle before we do anything. Black castled in the game I have here. And again, a typical move here would be the same move that we uh, talked about last time. What move was that? Knight to d5 would be a typical way to get great pressure here. In the game, white actually decided to play e5. And let me just show you the rest of this game because it's a very beautiful finish. Bishop takes c3 was played. Bishop takes c3. Black played passively with knight to e8. And now again, when you're a pawn down in this type of position, you need to attack. Bring all your pieces forwards. Knight to f4. Great move. Maybe come to c5. Queen to c5, queen to d3 was played. All the pieces getting a bit nearer to the black king. And look at black's pieces. All the black's pieces are stuck on the back rank. And this makes it very passive for him. So there's two pawns that we are down. is not so important because it's checkmate. We're going to checkmate our opponent. Checkmate is more important than a couple of measly pawns. So the game now finished. Knight to c6, rook to e1, knight to b4. And now we're going to just have a look at the end of this game because it's a very beautiful finish after the move 15, knight to h5. I actually think this move, knight to h5, was not the best move. White should have probably played something like rook to c1 instead, just lining up the rook against the black queen. But it was a very strange finish to this game. And the game did finish. I'll go through the moves without little comments until we get to the finish because not too much to say. But uh, White suddenly starts sacrificing all his pieces here so he's given up the knight on h5 and he brought his rook around so this was white's idea and now black did a counter attack against the white queen and here rook to g5 was played so it was kind of an unbelievable attacking idea and black missed the one defensive move that he could play here which was queen to h6 in actual fact if black had played queen to h6, he may well have been better here. But the game was a beautiful finish, like a yo-yo finish, which you, I'm sure a lot of you are accustomed to here. And that was knight takes e7. So white is now a queen and a piece down, but he gives checkmate by force. Can you actually, maybe you can work out the checkmate at home. It's white to play and it's checkmate in three moves from this position. Three moves. Okay, rook takes g7 check forcing king to h8 so now we see this x-ray on the king so we use a little yo-yo rook to f7 check the king comes back to g8 and now this bishop here look at the power of these two bishops the two danish bishops they're so strong rook comes back to g7 check king has to go in the corner and now it's checkmate in one move beautiful finish here can you see the checkmate Rook to g8, checkmate. Have a look at that position. What a beautiful position. So I thought it might as well show you the rest of that game because it was absolutely lovely. But that shows you some of the dangers black has in this opening. Let's go back to the start again so we can just go over some of these points. So the Danish gambits, d4. Our opponents, if he takes on d4, we go c3. If he takes on c3, we go bishop to c4, trying to get both our bishops to these diagonals. We want to continue this kind of play with our queen coming to b3, our knight's been developed quickly, us castling, and then the knight on c3 coming to d5. This, these are our main attacking ideas. Now, c takes b2 was what we looked at last time. Now, there is another option here, but okay, well, c takes b2 we have looked at. d6, let's say our opponent plays d6. What could we play now? Well, Let's just, we can play a lot of moves here, but I think simple development, something like knight to f3. And after something like knight to c6, let's get castled as quickly as possible. To be honest, if you forget what move order to play these things in, just play natural attacking ideas. I You could take back on c3 quickly, but I still want to wait until my opponent takes on b2. And then I want to get my queen out and just attack. So these are more my main ideas. For example, now, if black plays knight to f6, what do we do? Let's follow the principles. Can we get our queen to b3? Queen to b3, a good move. And already we have some pressure against black's position here. So 
d6 is a way that black can play but in in normal normally black will just take on b2 first and this is the main line so let's look at this again bishop takes b2 and we looked at bishop to b4 check last time now if d6 like before well we could go knight to f3 there's nothing wrong with that move we could also just go queen to b3 immediately here now that our bishops are lined up so all these ideas just flowing in together and now after something like queen to e7 how does black defend f7 he's got to do it in a rather ugly way we can get our knight to c3 and look at our pieces they're flying into the game another option here actually would have been knight to f3 this is quite a pretty move as well aiming to castle quickly and if our opponent takes on e4 well now we can just go king to f1 with knight to d2 coming next and rook to e1. Massive, massive attack. Now there's one real more, there's another main line I want to show you just before you're brave enough to give this opening a go. And that is after pawn takes b2, bishop takes b2. And now the move knight to f6, which is a main, main possibility here. But first of all, if you go knight to f6 now, well, it's not so strong now because we can go e5 straight away. And this just looks a bit funny now. So knight to f6 in this position is not best. But black, one of the reasons this gambit lost its popularity was the move d5 here. And this came into effect in about the 1920s. In this position, black was getting checkmated so many times in the lines we just looked at. He thought, well, this, this he's getting really horrible. But then black found this move d5 in this position a counter sacrifice to try to relieve the pressure because all the lines we've looked at appear to be quite dangerous, very active for white. But D5 was meant to be the sort of, not refutation, but it put a little bit of a damper on white's ideas. Now, after this move, I think you should go bishop takes D5. And then knight to F6 here is black's point. We can't go E5 now because we'd lose our bishop. And in this position, you have two ideas. You can either go for an equalish, very dynamic middle game position. And there's some very funny tactics here. And I once had this position in one of my games when I was a kid. And my opponent played this knight to f6, and I got really excited. I must have been about nine years old. And I thought, I can win my opponent's queen. Great. And I, I got really happy. And I banged out the next move, bishop takes f7 check, thinking, this is it, game over. I'm going to take his queen next move. But my opponent very calmly played king takes bishop, I took a queen, and then he went bishop to b4 check. So he had the same idea as me. But actually, this is main line. And I think after queen to d2, bishop takes d2, knight takes d2, we have a fairly even position. It's evil, even material now. White has this queen's, uh, sorry, king side majority. Black has the queen side majority. And this is a position I'd be happy to play with white because my pieces can come into the game very quickly. So I say this is option one for you. This is the more safer option to take on S7, swap some pieces off. But there is a very interesting other option here. And that is the move knight to c3. And I'd be very tempted to give this a go if I was um, had the chance, opportunity. The point is now, after a move like knight takes d5, which is pretty much forced, worth pointing out the c6 would be a horrible mistake now because we can win the queen with bishop to f7 check. The main difference with this in the previous line is, after queen takes d8, black can no longer move his bishop with check, because we have our knight on c3. So the best move for black is, after knight to c3, knight takes d5. This is clearly the best move. And now the idea behind knight c3, again, it's this knight coming into the center of the board. And this sets a devilish trick here a really devilish trick and black has to be so careful in this position there's so many ways black can lose immediately here an obvious move might look like c6 and now a little puzzle for you guys white to play and win material and i'm sure if you get this in your games you'll be able to play this trick in a number of chances white to play win material can you see the trick knight to f6 check a lovely trick Point being, after black takes your knight, you take the queen off, you take on f6 with check, win the rook on h8, and you're going to be lots of material up at the end of it. So 
I really like this trick of knight to c3 with the idea after knight takes knight, we recapture of our knight, putting our opponent in a difficult position. His only good move here is knight to d7. And this is where I think black is okay. Black is certainly doing okay here. So this is why you're taking a bit of a risk going for this, not the end game we looked at before. Now, there's lots more to this opening. Um, unfortunately, the time this video is running out, and I only wanted to give you a quick sort of rundown on another option to the King's Gambit. So I don't want to overly confuse you. Well, I, I go through the main points now again, just so you get an idea. So the Danish Gambit, you go D4. So it's like the King's Gambit, but you go, you don't go with the other pawn. The pawn's are D4. Our opponent takes, and now we go C3. And if our opponent takes on C3, we go bishop to c4, and we aim to get both our bishops to these diagonals, very dangerous diagonals. We try to play queen to b3 quickly, increasing the firepower on f7. We try to castle super quick, knight to f3, castles. And the other idea, what do we do with our knight on b1? Our knight on b1 comes quickly into the game on d5. Now, hopefully that's covered most things. Now, I know that's a lot for you to take in, and I've done that at quite quick speed just because of the amount of stuff to absorb. What I would recommend you do is check out the PGN that will be available to this game. So that'll be a document where it gives much more uh, detailed analysis of these lines. So you can go over that document, and if you combine that with watching this video, you should have a good good nice attacking opening to play against 1e5 so hopefully you enjoyed that i'm trying to stick with interesting ideas of 1e4 and try to catch up with the other videos in the series because they go with this one and then you'll have a dangerous and spicy attacking repertoire thank you for now